Hi, in this episode we're going to build our first Ansible project together. So this is actually something that you guys voted on YouTube. So we'll build an Ansible related project with two different Linux servers. We're going to use some amazing Ansible features like modules, playbook, ad hoc commands if statement using when handlers roles so this is really an excellent starting beginner project or maybe if you are more advanced it's something that you can absolutely use for extending your knowledge and later on you can use the project to push to github or put on your cv so let's go i hope that you enjoy it hi welcome to netcafe on this channel we talk about the devops cloud cybersecurity. so if you like this type of topics consider subscribing. When we look at the requirements of our, our project, we will need to install two web servers on our machines using Ansible, of course. So on Ubuntu server, we need to install Apache and on CentOS, we'll install the HTTPD web server. And then once it, this is done, we also need to do some small changes, like for example, changing the host names of our servers. We're also going to install some additional packages and then at the end we're also going to create some users that need to fit some specific groups. For all of this we're going to use Ansible modules, uh, host name, the service and also users, groups, some other modules on the documentation. We're also going to use roles to set up the servers and of course I will use AWS to start to free servers which is the control machine and two servers that we're going to manage. If you already have your Linux server on-prem or provisioned through different cloud system rather than uh, AWS it's absolutely not a problem Problem, you can just move forward to the later chapter. In the first step, I'm going to do provisioning of the free EC2 machines in the next step. Let's go. Step number one, provisioning the EC2 instances. So I will use AWS to start my three Linux servers. So the first one is the control machine and this one I will use to install Ansible. Uh, this machine will be utilized to control two other servers. For the control machine, I will select Ubuntu. I don't need any specific high process machine. I will just select the one from T2 Micro tier. I will create a separate keeper. And also I will need to manage the network security groups because I still need to be sure that I will be able to connect through my laptop to the new Ansible machine. So I'll just create a new uh, network security group. I'll call it Ansible SG. And here I'll just make sure that I can use SSH from my IP to connect to the machine. Okay, so that's great. It's first machine. Then we can launch two other machines. So first one I will call web server 01. And this one will be the first machine that I will use to uh, control uh, with Ansible. For this machine, I will going to go with uh, Red Hat a distribution of uh, uh, CentOS uh, 9. And also just like in the case of control machine, I don't need any specific high processing power CPU. I will create a separate keeper, com different one than I had for the control machine. And of course, network security groups. And just similarly, like in the previous case, I need to make sure that I will be able to connect uh, with SSH from my control machine. But also in order to make some checks, uh, I also going to um, enable the SSH from my IP. And here, very important, I'm selecting the Ansible control machine security group. So the one that I created with the previous node. So again, I am able to ping this oh, SSH from control machine. And now I will also create the second web server. This one will be Debian distribution Ubuntu. I will select Ubuntu 24. And here also I will go with T2 Micro. I don't need any specific big high processing power. I will create a separate keeper and also the adjustment of the network network security groups and just like in the previous case of the CentOS server I need to make sure that I will be able to connect to this specific server from my control machine where I have Ansible 
installed so we have already our three machines so this is the setup that we have here again i have a control machine and because uh, ansible is agentless this is the only machine that will actually have ansible installed and then i have two web servers so this is the web server 01 that runs centos with the specific private ip that i got from aws and then i also have web server 02 that will run the ubuntu uh, also with the specific private ip and i will use ansible from control machine that is ubuntu based machine to manage and communicate with the web servers through port tcp port 22 which is the ssh protocol let's go step number two SSH keys exchange. So in this step, we'll try to authenticate our machines to the control uh, node, the one that where we have the, our Ansible. So let's now try to SSH to our control node Ubuntu and let's start to with installing ansible so for installation of ansible i will use the official documentation and here we can see that we have the specific commands that we can use for installation of ansible on ubuntu those four commands let's just now try to copy paste this so i will start with the sudo apt update we are updating our server Okay, now we can run a sudo apt install software properties common. And finally, we run apt install ansible. Waiting a moment. Control Machine is the only Linux server that will have Ansible because Ansible is agentless. And now we are just finished the installation and we can run quick ansible dash dash version now what we can do is we can create a folder for our project let's call it ansible let's cd into the project we can see it's empty so the first thing i will do is to create the inventory so the inventory is the file where we keep all the information the needed information about the nodes that we will control i will now define all the most important parameters needed for the for the connectivity so the first one i will call web server 01 and for the telling Ansible how to connect to the specific machine, I will need to define Ansible user, Ansible host, which is the IP, uh, private IP, and the name of the user that we can use to connect. I also need to define Ansible SSH private key file. So this one will keep the private key needed for the authentication with the SSH. Let's just now exit and here I will just beam the private key of our controlled nodes. Let's just begin our copy. I now am back in my control node. So now I'm just beam the host key file. I will change the missions to 400. Now we can run a quick verification with Ansible uh, ad hoc commands. And we can see that ping was successful, mean, meaning that the first node was already authenticated. Hostname configuration. So in this part, we will provision our two control nodes, web servers with different hostname. As a first part, I will just define our second web server. Apart from these two nodes, I will also define a group that I will call the web server. So anytime when I was just calling the uh, the nodes, I would just use the web server group rather than this specific two nodes. Now just do some final verification. Let's just run the ping ad hoc ping command and we can see that both nodes reply with this success. We can move on to setting up our project. So as the first thing I will do, I will just create the main playbook. So I will just call it setup web servers. So this playbook will call two different roles. First role will be the provision, the configuration of the web server, HTTPD and Apache for Ubuntu server. And the second role will be for user creation, which is also part of the, our requirements. To create a role, I would use command galaxy init web server. So this command will help me to create the whole project structure for the web server role and also the second role that uh, I will call users. And we can see that the command really created everything that we needed, which are the files, handlers, templates. Let's now go to our first role, which is the web servers. And here I will define the first task, which is the uh, configuration of the host name. I will just uh, move, I will just make some a little bit of the cleaning here. I will just now move web servers to roles. To define our task, we have to go to the file that is called main in tasks. Okay, once we open it, we can see it's empty, it's waiting for our task. Okay, so 
if we want to create the hostname, configure the host and change the hostname of our nodes, we will use the Ansible module called hostnames. And we can see that it's already predefined. Everything is nicely predefined for us. The only thing that we need to do is just copy paste the module and tune it to accordingly to our needs. So this is also actually what I did. So the first task I will create will be changing the hostname for our CentOS server. And the name I will give to our CentOS will be web server 01. The task will only run for the uh, nodes in the inventory that the current hostname is web server 01. So that means it will only run for our CentOS and I will just for YY copy and copy paste the task for Ubuntu machine. So I will change the name to web02. Uh, only for the machines that current name in the inventory is web02. Let's just save it. And now I will run the playbook that contains the web server role uh, call by calling the command Ansible playbook playbooks and now selecting the our YAML file setup servers with defining the inventory. The name was changed. Uh, we can see that the play was successful. We have two OKs. We can all also now run a quick ad hoc command for the additional verification so I will use the command module and we can see that hosting was indeed changed. Step number four web server configuration. So in this part we we're going to install and start both Apache and HTTPD service on our servers and for that I'm going to use the Ansible community documentation because all of the modules are already available for the developers Okay, let's come back now to our web server role. I have already added two new tasks, which are the installation of HTTPD and Apache. So for that, we're going to use the YAM and app module. The names of the tasks are install a web server on CentOS machine and install web server or Ubuntu machine. In both cases, the statement must be present that will tell Ansible to install respective packages, which are in this case HTTPD and Apache. One very interesting also mechanism here that was used was the WAM statement. We are telling Ansible to install the respective packages when we have the specific Ansible distribution. So in the first case there it is CentOS and the second case it is Ubuntu. I also wrote two more tasks which is the which are starting the web servers. So which are very much similar to the installation but in this case we have started both services. So in this case, we have a state started rather than present. We can also see that in this specific case, so I'm not using the YAM or apt built-in module. I'm using actually service module that will tell Ansible to install this specific, to start the specific services. And just before we move on with running the playbook, I'm going to quickly define the something that you can also define at the very beginning when you're starting your projects, um, Ansible configuration. It is still quite useful and this is also something that I wanted to show you. So basically here we are going to define where Ansible should look for our inventory because then we don't need to uh, define it every time we run the playbook. So we're just going to tell Ansible that inventory is in the current folder dot inventory slash host YAML. And now let's run the playbook. We can see that there is no indication that we are going to use dash inventory because it's already defined in the Ansible configuration file. Okay, we started, we see our task, gathering facts, now setting the host name, and we see that we have the installation and starting of the web services, the specific web services on our machines. What we can also do is now run the quick ad hoc command to verify our changes. For that, I'm going to select web server 01. For the module, I'm going to use shell with the argument systemctl status HTTP d because the web 01 is our centos machine and we can see that the state is active and the service is running step number five pushing index.html so now when we already have the server we can now push the index.html file to verify that a web server are working this is html file that i have written so it's basically hello world and the name of the server I'm going to our roles web server tasks and here in the main yaml i need to tell 
Ansible to deploy the index.html file on our web server. So for that I'm going to use the template module which is very useful. I'm going to use our index.html. It's a Jinja 2 format. I'm going to define the source destination and also I'm going to define the handler here. Ansible will run this task only when the, there is a change in the index.html file. We're going to run the specific task for both uh, CentOS and Ubuntu. I also added the when statement. Oh, I just need to correct the small typo. And now what the last thing that we need to do is to run the Ansible playbook and now I already changed the font a bit. We run all of our tasks and we have the host name, web server and also deployment of our index.html. Now I can go to AWS and also I need to make sure that our machines are able to communicate on port 80 when it comes for the HTTP. Basically from my IP I'm going to allow in the network security group to communicate. Okay I'm just taking the public IP and we can see that we have hello world on our both servers on the web server 01 and web server 02. Part 6 package installation. In this part we need to install some extra software on our machines so for that I'm going to define the list of the software packages that I want to install. So we have git, curl, firewall D. I defined the list in also web server role but this time I didn't go to task but I went to vars main.yaml. I'm going to run our setup playbook and we can see all of our tasks. Now we're also going to install the packages which is exactly what we needed. Part number seven, users creation. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add the users role into our setup server playbook, so the main one. We can see that there is already a documentation with the pre-made modules for us from Ansible that involves user creation together with the different parameters. Now I will open tasks main.yaml and I will start creating the first tasks. So the first one will be creation of the users group. I'm going to use the built-in group module. In this file I will define all the tasks and, and in the user slash vars main I'm going to define all of the variables for, for this specific role. But now let's just focus on the task. So I'm going to mark the group as present. Second task I will name add user Johnny D and for that I'm going to use the user module and again here I'm going to use some variables that I will define in the variables main.yaml. Among the parameters I'm going to list name, a comment and also user ID and group for my user number one and now I'm just going to copy this task and I will create the second user with of course different name and the different parameters so it's a user team to name and other parameters and now I'm going to go to the user slash vars dot slash main and here we'll put all of the variables that later on the role will use while running the playbook. So all of the specific variables that we want to use so the name of our user specific ID number and of course the, some comment if you want to put. Now I'm just going to copy the lines, change the variables to the different name, different ID, different comment. And now just save and quit. Okay and I think we are ready to go and I will run Ansible playbook and set up server. Okay let's change the font a bit so you can better see. We have all of the tasks that we have already defined, so the gathering facts, host names, setup server, web servers, configuration, installation of the CentOS, 
deployment of the index deploy deployment of the index.html on CentOS Ubuntu, installation of the extra packages, and now we are moving to the creation of the users. And now we can see that the users were successfully created. We can also now run quick ad hoc command to verify the changes. We can see that I'm not using Ansible dash playbook but only the Ansible because this is the format, the syntax for the ad hoc command. I'm selecting the target, the module, which in this case is the shell, and I will see in the Etsy password D file if we have any new users. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have more questions about Ansible, let me know in the comment. Thanks.